I know we're here to talk about physical agents, but remember we're here to talk about physical agents in the context of being an occupational therapist. And if you skip that process and say, oh, the doctor sent you here for ultrasound and go and get the ultrasound machine, you are not engaging in an occupational therapy process. You are engaging in a technical, you might as well at that point be just a technician working in a doctor's office, okay? The professional practice is to assess the intervention and then collaborate with the patient. That is truly the professional process, okay? So I cannot, exp I cannot emphasize that enough as we move forward. And I am taking the time to do this because I find it critical to make the difference between a technician and a profession. I feel like it's a critical difference, and I hope to make that unique to this seminar, that when we're using physical agent modalities, we are doing so within the professional context of occupational therapy, not fulfilling a prescription, okay? That is a really important consideration, okay? And that should guide us as an overwhelming objective throughout this whole course. As we discuss everything over the next time interval, as we discuss each of the different uh, interventions, the overriding principle should never be lost. These are tools within a professional concept, okay? And they should never substitute for the professionalism of their selection in a collaborative process. We're going to continue now with a discussion of the principles of electrical currents, of electric currents. And the purpose here is to ensure that the practicing clinician has a Basic, has a basic understanding of what electricity is, what electricity does. If you're going to use electricity as a tool in therapeutic interventions, one must understand how the tool operates. Uh, so just to review to this point, we have covered, uh, as, uh, as we've introduced electricity, we've uh, started with our understanding of pain. We've discussed the way pain propagates. We've discussed the use of electric electricity uh, for the control of pain. Okay, now you get a nice little tingle. tingle. You're getting just a tingle, correct? Right. All right. Now that tingle is going to continue. And before we continue with that, go any further. It's just tingling now, right? Yes. Is it uncomfortable? No. Okay. The tingling, remember we've not reached that threshold yet. We've not reached a significant enough threshold to depolarize the membranes to allow for a contraction. Remember we discussed that in the, uh, in the lecture component, okay? So let's come back and see what actually happens now. We're going to continue to bring the threshold up. And there's our, there's our muscle stimulation. Okay. Now I'm going to come off her motor point. And you can actually see her muscle contraction reduce. Now I want to take this little probe lead that I've made for myself and see if we can find the flexidigitorum profundus. And to do so, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold Susie's fingers up like this and move over the motor points of the FDP. What we should see is the small finger and the ring finger come strongly with an initiation of the DIP joints. Three components of tissue that affect the absorption of light. Let's go back to, to the physiology of light is water, because the water will absorb light, and that's like the higher your um, milliwatts, the higher the um, power is on that, is it may absorb a lot more water. And now you're talking about heat, because if it absorbs a lot of water, it can produce heat. So again, you have to be careful with some of them. Some of the, a lot of practice acts have not yet included light, but you're going to start seeing this being included to where you're going to have to understand the absorption of, of light on tissues. So water is going to absorb light uh, tremendously. Hemoglobin, hemoglobin is going to be a good absorber of light. So it's the, the pigment that, that makes your blood red and that absorbs light. And then you have your um, melon um, and that is the pigment that gives the skin the natural color. That will also absorb a lot of light. And that's going to play a, a great role when you decide your dosage on somebody who is light skin versus dark skin. Now things to consider, as we just said, are your skin color or your tone. And also your weight. So if somebody has increased weight, um, they may have increased water, and therefore you have to have an increased treatment time. If somebody has dark skin, 
then you're, they're going to have more melanin sites in their skin. They're, it's going to absorb more of the light before it reaches the targeted tissue. So therefore, you're going to have to increase the, temp, temp, uh, the treatment time. Usually, the darker the, the skin tone, you may have to increase it by 50%. Whereas if somebody is extremely fair, you may decrease your treatment time by 50, 50%. Okay, now we've concluded our demonstrations. Now we're going to have a little fun. We're going to try and incorporate very quickly um, what, what we're going to incorporate quick recognition of the principles and some of the intervention techniques that we've used. What I'm going to do is, uh, uh, Susie again is going to help me out. I'm going to flash a, um, I'm going to flash a machine at you or I'm going to flash a, 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 a um, treatment intervention, a positioning, uh, whatever, whatever comes to, to mind actually. We're going to be just winging that and whatever comes to mind that was in the course, it's up to you. To take, a, uh, to take a moment to recognize what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. And I'll say to you, I will ask you specifically, what machine is this? What placement is this? What technique is this? And then I'll say to you, take a New York Minute. And when I say take a New York Minute, I would like you to stop your video or your, uh, or your DVD or your online streaming. Stop whatever method it is you're using to view the course and See if you can process and come up with the answer, and then we'll go to, when you start it again, we'll be giving you the right answer. Susie, you got the rules of the game? I got it. All right, we ready? Ready. Let's roll. All right. Okay, we reviewed this unit uh, previously in the course. Uh, what is the advantages of this unit? Take a New York Minute. Right, it's portable and the patient can take it home. Now, what are the disadvantages of this unit? Let me give you a little view here, if you forgot. What are the disadvantages of this unit? Take a New York Minute. Right, it is unable to set the pulse width. You can only set the intensity. Finally. What is this unit? What is it? What does it do? What waveform? Take that minute.